President Joe Biden on Friday praised the cooperation between South Korea, Japan, and the U.S. at countering what he described as North Korea's dangerous and destabilizing cooperation with Russia. Biden spoke at the start of a meeting in Peru with South Korean President Yoon suk Yeol and Japanese Prime Minister Shigeru Ishiba on the sidelines of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. The talks came amid heightened concerns about North Korea's growing military partnership with Russia and Pyongyang's stepped-up cadence of ballistic missile tests. Biden celebrated the partnership between Japan and South Korea, two countries that have historical enmity but under Biden's presidency are now tightening security and economic ties as their corner of the world becomes more complicated. Biden noted that it would be his last meeting with them but that the trilateral partnership should be preserved for years to come. I'm proud of how far we've come, Biden said. Whatever the issue, we've taken it on together. The meeting comes as North Korea has deployed thousands of troops to Russia to help Moscow try to claw back land in the Kursk border region that Ukraine seized earlier this year. As we can see from the recent deployment of DPRK troops to Russia, the challenging security environment within and outside the region once again reminds us the importance of our trilateral cooperation, Yoon said, using the initials for North Korea's formal name and speaking through a translator. Ishiba also emphasized the importance of the three nations acting as a bulwark against North Korea and pointed to recent military exercises between the three nations as a sign of cooperation. A three-day exercise in June was geared toward improving joint ballistic missile defense, anti-submarine warfare, surveillance, and other skills and capabilities and to help the three countries improve their ability to share missile warnings increasingly important as North Korea tests ever more sophisticated systems. I look forward to furthering our partnership in response against North Korea and in many other areas," Ishiba said through a translator. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un ordered a series of ballistic missile tests in the lead-up to this month's U.S. election and is claiming progress on efforts to build capability to strike the U.S. mainland. Well, Mr. President, Mr. Prime Minister, Welcome, it's good to be with all of you again. It's a great group. Fifteen months ago, we held the first ever leader-level summit of our three countries at Camp David back in the United States. And it inaugurated a whole new era of cooperation between our, among our three countries. It was part of a much larger effort in these past four years to bring together America's Pacific allies. I'm proud, I'm proud of how far we've come since that historic meeting, promoting development in Southeast Asia and in the Pacific Islands, linking arms to secure the technologies of the future, and countering North Korea's dangerous and destabilizing cooperation with Russia. Whether, whatever the issue, we're taking it on together. I think it's, it makes a big difference for peace and security. We've now reached the moment of significant political change. And I congratulate the Prime Minister for uh, his taking office. And uh, this is likely to be my last trilateral meeting with this important group. But I'm proud to have helped be one of the parts of building this, uh, this partnership. And I think it's built to last. That's my hope and expectation. I truly believe cooperation of our countries will be the foundation to peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific for many years to come if we stay together, and I believe that. So I look forward to our discussion, and Mr. President, I now turn it over to you. Today's meeting demonstrates the three countries' strong commitment to developing our trilateral cooperation continuously. In the midst of complex global crisis, cooperation between the ROK, the US and Japan not only coincides with the national interest of all three countries, but is also essential for peace and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific region. As we can see from the recent deployment of DPRK trips to Russia, the challenging security environment within and outside the region once again reminds us the importance of our trilateral cooperation. Since the Camp David Leader Summit last year, led by President Biden, our trilateral cooperation has become and is becoming stronger every day. 
we are accumulating our experiences of a trilateral cooperation fast, which is leading to tangible results. The trilateral cooperation now goes beyond the security as it has developed into comprehensive and institutional cooperation that encompasses economy, advanced technologies such as AI and quantum technology, as well as exchange between future generations. The trilateral secretariat that will be launched as a result of today's meeting will be a strong foundation that will lead to even greater cooperation among our three nations. この環境は極めて厳しいものであります。いうことは極めて Thank you, Press. Thank you, Press. Mr. President, Mr. President, what concerns are you hearing from leaders about the incoming administration? Mr. President, any concern about some of Trump's appointments? South Korean opposition leader Lee Jae-myung was convicted of violating election law and sentenced to a suspended prison term Friday by a court that ruled he made false statements while denying corruption allegations during a presidential campaign. If it stands, the ruling could significantly shake up the country's politics by potentially unseating Lee as a lawmaker and denying him a shot at running for president in the next election. But Lee, who faces three other trials over corruption and other criminal charges, is expected to challenge any guilty verdict and it remains unclear whether the Supreme Court would decide on any of the cases before the presidential vote in March 2027. Lee told reporters that he plans to appeal Friday's verdict at the Seoul Central District Court, which gave him a sentence of one year in prison, suspended for two years. Under South Korean law, Lee would lose his legislative seat and be barred from running in elections for five years if he receives either a penalty exceeding a 1 million won fine for election law violations or any prison sentence for other crimes. Lee, a firebrand liberal who narrowly lost the 2022 election to conservative President Yoon suk Yeol, had steadfastly denied wrongdoing. The ruling at the Seoul Central District Court drew intense media coverage and seemingly thousands of protesters. Surrounded by police lines, Lee supporters and critics occupied separate streets near the court, shouting opposing slogans and holding signs that said Lee Jae-myung is innocent and arrest Lee Jae-myung. There were no immediate reports of major clashes. Prosecutors indicted Lee in 2022 over charges that he made false claims related to two controversial development projects in the city of Songnam, where he was mayor from 2010 to 2018 while campaigning as the presidential candidate for the Democratic Party. One of the comments cited by prosecutors is related to suspicions that Songnam City in 2015 changed the land use designation to allow a housing project on a site previously preserved as green space due to lobbying by private developers. Lee said during a parliamentary hearing in October 2021 that the city was instead coerced by the national government to make the change to the site in the district of Baekyeondong. Prosecutors say there's no evidence to back Lee's claim, which has been denied by the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, and Transport. Prosecutors also cited a TV interview Lee gave in December 2021, when he said he didn't know a senior official at Songnam City's urban development arm during his time as mayor. Lee spoke a day after the official was found dead amid an investigation into a property development project in the district of Daejeongdong which reaped huge profits for a small asset management firm and its affiliates and raised suspicions about possible corrupt links between them.